What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Counting Wisdom podcast. Um, I wanted to give a update on just in time events. Um, we learn that um, Jesus said we will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but he said the end will not happen yet. I'm going to go to Matthew 24, um, verse 6. He says, You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. So, in perspective, Jesus is saying here that, you know, the tribulation hasn't happened yet, and it is around the corner, but it the end is not yet and so we know that wars and rumors of wars are um something that jesus said would happen but um he didn't say that it's a sign that the end is um about to happen but We can go on to verse 7. He says, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, earthquakes, and various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. And so, I think without a doubt, you know, we are in the birth pains. You know, I think that if I were to give an update about where we are as far as when the rapture is going to happen... You know, I think that there are definitely um, birth pains that are happening around the world. You know, there was just a huge earthquake uh, not that long ago. I think it was two months ago. But yet it kind of goes out of our mind because there's so much in the news today about different things that are happening in the world. Um. One thing that Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 12, he said, Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. So I think that's Jesus telling us that we should do our best to not grow cold to other people. You know, we as Christians know that other people are going to be cold towards us. And we know it's another sign of the end times. But he's also saying that, you know, he's telling us ahead of time so we don't get cold towards other people. But anyway, you know, we see different signs happening in the news. We see famines that are happening. If you don't, you know, I highly recommend, um, you know, searching the news for the right news station that is covering those things because there are famines happening in the world right now we see the increase of wickedness um you know it's if depending on the news uh, station that you follow you know it's like you see more and more crazy stories that You know, it kind of makes you wonder, like, wow, did someone really do that? You know, and I think a lot of it, you know, is going to be true. You know, I've heard of fake news, you know, but at the same time, I don't think we're in a place to say that, you know, something that we see or hear is always fake, you know. And so, yeah, I think there are some crazy things happening. But Jesus said, the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. Um, You know, I think what he's talking about there is continuing to believe, continuing in your faith in Christ. That person will be saved. I don't think Jesus is saying that a person who, you know, turns away from Christ you can count on that person being saved in the end. I don't think so. You know, I don't think he's saying that. I think he's saying that, hey, you know, the one who remains strong, 
until the end will until the end comes will be saved um verse 14 i think is interesting it says and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come so it said it's saying that everyone once once the end happens which by the way you know i believe matthew 24 is kind of a timeline even though it jumps i think a little bit from different time periods but um i think it's a timeline and it's saying that the increase of wickedness is before the end comes and so we can be sure that wickedness is just going to increase but anyway Jesus is saying that the, everyone's going to be able to hear the gospel and it's going to be a testimony. That means that people are going to know openly that this is the reason that, you know, they are rejecting the life from God is because they hear the gospel and they they refuse it. And that's the reason why the end times are going to happen. And he, right at verse 15, if you were to turn in your Bible to Matthew 24, verse 15, he says, So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand, then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains and let no one on the housetop go down to take anything out of the house. So a lot of people reference that to say that the temple will be built before the end fully comes um, through whatever means, um, you know, before the or around the time of the tribulation they a lot of people say that the temple the third temple needs to be built and we will see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation now when i say we will see i think a lot of a lot of people um, believe that the rapture happens before verse 15 of the abomination that causes desolation. And so um, it can be confusing. I know I won't go through every uh, verse here in Matthew 24 because Jesus just wants us to be ready. I think that is one of the reasons why Matthew 24 can be confusing and I don't think Jesus is letting us know every single detail uh, for reasons of, you know, uh, we have enemies out there that, you know, I think G God is just strategically not telling people everything that's going to happen. Um, but one of the things that... Um, we know when the tribulation happens one of the things that characterizes the tribulation is in verse 21 of matthew chapter 24 it says that there will be great distress unequaled from the beginning of the world until now and never to be equaled again so the tribulation we you know when you go over to revelation you know um the tribulation has things that are happening that are just unparalleled um when we look at revelation chapter six um the first white horse that comes out in revelation chapter six it says he was given a crown and he rode out as a conqueror bent on conquest. And then it says 
the fiery red horse comes out and peace from the earth peace peace is taken from the earth and it makes people kill each other so just those two alone you know i don't think we know a time where a country is set on conquering another country and and all the other countries to me that's what uh, the first white horse happens is that a country and in particular a leader of that country is going out and is bent on conquest and he's trying to conquer other nations and I don't think we've lived in that time period other than the Roman emperor, empire was I, I believe the last kind of major um, civilization that was bent on conquering um, another nation. I don't know. I'm not a super huge history expert, but to really hone in on my point is that just the first um, two horses, it's like unparalleled. It's describing unparalleled distress. I mean, when it says it will make people kill each other, you know, that sounds like something other than just the everyday kind of crimes that you hear about in the news. It sounds like it's something unparalleled to anything that has happened. Um, and then the third horse that comes out, the black horse there are a pair of scale, uh, scales in his hand. And basically, it's a famine. Two pounds of wheat for a day's wages and six pounds of barley for a day's wages and do not damage the oil and the wine. And then the pale horse, its rider was named Death and Hades followed, was following close behind him. They were given a power over the fourth of the earth to kill by sword, famine, plague, and by by the wild beast of the earth. And so, in a way, those kind of sound like everyday occurrences. But to me, when these seals are being opened, it's something on a major scale. It's not just you know, the crimes that we hear about in uh, the world today or the famines. Because when Jesus was describing, you know, there will be wars and rumors of wars and uh, nation fighting against nation and kingdom against kingdom. You know, to me that he was just describing an increase of wickedness and an increase of, um, you know, sorrows. But when these seals are opened, I guess my point is that, you know, it's an unparalleled time. And so, um, as you go on through the book of revelation, you just see some major things happening. Um, the wrath of God is just being poured out. And so back to my original discussion is that You know, we're definitely not in the tribulation, and um, I think we can just settle on that. But how close are we to the rapture? You know, I think that um, no man knows the day or the hour, but I have seen some good points about, you know, Jesus possibly returning on the 6,000 when when it's year 6,000, as far as as from the time of Adam and Eve to the time of the return of Christ is supposed to be around 6,000 years. And I guess when people take the phrase, no man knows the day or the hour, it doesn't say no one knows the month or the year. It just says no one knows the day or the hour. So if you're taking that literally, 
then I could see the point that, you know, Jesus could return on the six on year 6000. But I don't preach that, you know, I'm just kind of discussing it here. I don't normally say that because when I think Jesus says no one knows the day or the hour, I think it means that no one can figure it out, you know. But um, we can find out what, you know, what year we're in. And from the Jewish calendar... I think we're on uh, year 5,783. So as of 2023, we are currently in the year 5,783 on the Jewish calendar. And so I guess if we just did a little bit of a calculation of 6,000 minus 573, we would get the number 217. So, from that theory that Jesus returns on year 6,000, we would still have about 200 years left, 217 years left to be exact, if for some reason the Jewish calendar is completely accurate to the day that Adam and Eve were created which I don't see how it could be, you know, I don't think so. And so, um, like I said, I don't know that Jesus, I don't see how anyone can know how Jesus would return on the seventh, six thousand, six thousandth year, only just from, you know, creation was six days. And so they just, you know, take what Peter said about one day is as a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. And so they kind of just calculate that, you know, since we know that the earth is, you know, almost 6,000 years old from just genealogies, then that's kind of where that theory comes from is, you know, saying that God made the earth in six days. And so, He'll, he's going to return and the millennial kingdom is going to be on the 7,000th year. Now, I'm not denying that we can't calculate the year or even the month, you know, because a lot of people say, oh, Jesus is going to return in the month of September because of one of the Jewish feasts are on um that September uh, time frame and they say in that Jewish feast no one knows the day or the hour I know this can sound kind of confusing but do I think that we have 200 years left you know I don't I wouldn't guess it you know I know there's another um kind of teaching out there that I can briefly touch on that talks about Israel becoming a nation again in 1948. And they take a psalm that says um, a man's years are 70 years um, and by reason of strength, 80 years. I think that's the number. And so they say that Since Israel was um, born in 1948, again, you know, that they're now 75 years old. And so they say, you know, Israel is 
reaching its peak. And so Jesus is going to come back. Now, um, there are some more details to that theory. Um, There's the fig tree parable where Jesus said, you know, when you see a fig tree begin to blossom, you know that summer is near. And so Jesus said, when you see all these things, you know, my return is near at the doors. And so from that phrase, you know, I would say more along the lines of that's how I would say that Jesus's return is near is because when he says, when you see all these things start to take place, you will know that his return is near. And when he says all things, he means the wars and rumors of wars, the famines, the earthquakes, um, the nations fighting against nation and kingdom against kingdom. But it could also mean that, you know, when you see the tribulation as well, because, you know, we know for sure that Jesus is returning to set up his millennial kingdom, you know, after the tribulation, you know, that's if we take revelation seriously and take it literally, then we know that, you know, he returns at um, the end of the tribulation. And I think that's in um, Revelation chapter 19 ish, um, chapter 19, 20 ish. And so, you know, some of my thoughts after I've given you all this different information is that, you know, um, I think the clear takeaway from all of this is to one, be ready, you know, just start getting ready now. Be one of the parables, the, be one of the wise virgins in the parable of the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins especially when you see the day drawing near when you see more craziness what i i like to say is that when i see the world become like noah noah's day and like lot's day then you know to me that would be more of a indicator that you know god is going to send jesus to return now um do I think the world is getting that way? You know, I think that when the world gets just politically more loose with a lot of laws, especially with a lot of breaking of God's laws, you know, uh, not just laws of, you know, our country, you know, the USA or whatever country you live in, not just worldly laws, but also the breaking of God's laws, you know, not to get into um, certain sins. But when you see certain sins start to become more accepted in the world, I think that the I think the word is called the degradation, the the decline of that country or the the world is going to be close because you can't have people sin and, you know, they kind of stay stagnant. When I read the book of Romans, it describes sin as it's not only just one sin, like you steal a candy bar and then tomorrow you repent and you become righteous. Now, some people do that's how we are evangelizing and you know we became christians because all people have sinned but some people turn away from their sins but my point is that in the book of revelation it seems to describe sin becoming more and more progressively evil so you steal a candy bar on monday but on friday you steal something bigger or 
in three years, if you're still stealing, now you are doing more risky things. Now there's more sins involved with stealing. You know, there's more and more things that you're doing and adding on to your sins because it's just getting worse and worse. And so um, to me, when we see openly different sins that are happening, I think that the world is declining, you know, and I don't think that the world can sustain itself in the point of God will soon intervene and the rapture will be a part of that. Now, do I think it's going to be within 200 years for say? per se, like, you know, when we talked about the 6,000 years, Jesus returning in the year 6,000, as far as the Jewish calendar is concerned, and we have 200 years left. I don't know, because like I'm saying, when I see all the different signs in the world, which I definitely believe were in the birth, birth pains, to me, you know, it's getting worse and worse. Another sign, I think, is when more and more Christians start to say that it is the end times. You know, yes, you know, even people at my church sometimes say, no, you know, he's not returning in our generation. You know, and so, yeah, there are people out there who don't necessarily think that. But I heard a study that 43% of Americans believe that it is the end times but there's still that you know 60 something percent that you know may not necessarily believe it's end times or you know but interesting that number is close to 50 50 and in the parable of the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins five believed and got ready and five didn't believe and weren't ready and so they were left behind and so it's interesting that when i saw that poll out there that that study that was done where it said 43 percent of americans believe that we are in the end times you know that's interesting that it's close to 50 percent and you know that would be 50 50 split So anyway, thanks so much for checking out this podcast. I think as a summary, you know, I think we're definitely getting closer to the end times. I think, you know, if someone is new listening to this, you know, for sure, it's always good to start getting ready to, you know, um, start getting on that journey to repenting of your sins and uh, walking and living a clean life before God and others and, you know, you can't go wrong with being ready. You know, to me, it's only something positive instead of saying, oh, you know, I'll become a Christian later or, you know, I'll change my life more later. You know, there's always something positive with being ready for Jesus return, where when you stand before him, you know, you can give a good account of your life. So anyway, thanks so much for checking out this podcast and I will talk to you on the next podcast. See ya.